The can was half full. Inside, a green glob of gooey monster blood shimmered in the sunlight like lime jello. But it was empty, Andy protested, staring into the can. I know it was. Evan shook the can. The green glob inside quivered. There must have been a tiny speck in there, Evan guessed, down at the bottom of the can, and now it's growing and growing again. Great, Andy declared. She slapped him on the back so hard he nearly dropped the blue can. Great? What's so great, he demanded shakingly. Now you can show this to the kids at school, she replied. Now they'll have to believe you. He spun around, turning his back to her, and hunched over, protecting the can. Give it to me, she cried laughing. She started tickling his sides. Give it, give it. No, he protested, breaking free. He ran to the safety of a tall evergreen shrub. It's mine, Andy declared, coming after him, hands at her waist. If you're not going to use it, hand it back. Evan stood his ground. His expression turned serious. Andy, don't you remember? He demanded shrilly. Don't you remember how scary this stuff was? Don't you remember how dangerous it was? All the trouble it caused? So, she replied, her eyes on the blue can. We have to get rid of it, Evan told her firmly. We can't let it out of the can. It will grow and grow and never stop. But I thought you wanted to show it to the kids to prove it's real. No, Evan interrupted. I changed my mind. This stuff is too dangerous. We have to get rid of it. He locked eyes on her, his features tight with fear. Andy, I've had nightmares every night because of this stuff. I don't want any new nightmares. Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Bookworm's Goosebumps Retrospective. Today, we look at number 18 and the first sequel of the series, Monster Flood 2. Evan is down in his new school in Atlanta, but things are not going well. He told everyone his encounter with Monster Blood during the summer, but no one believes him, and now everyone makes fun of him making his life miserable. When his friend Andy comes to stay with her aunt while her parents are away, she reveals the empty can of Monster Blood. But when they open it, it is already half full, bringing with it a new set of troubles. The cover is interesting, with the huge hamster, the broken cage, and the Monster Blood overflowing the desk. I don't know, but this one really grosses me out. It may be the bit of monster blood in the hamster's mouth. Yuck. He's one hungry hamster. So being the first sequel to a book I enjoyed, how does it do? Okay, it's actually interesting to see how the events in the first book have affected Evan over the months. He keeps having nightmares about the blood, and when it comes back, he partially wants to use it to show people it exists, but also knows the trouble it brought on him the last time. Add on top of that a bully who steals it at one point, and you know trouble is about to go down. However, there is one teeny tiny weeny problem. They never acknowledged the revelation from the first book. Unless I read wrong, the monster blood should be no more than a pile of goop. So why is it still alive? This isn't what happened last week. Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us. This isn't fair. He didn't get out of the cock duty car! This really just bugged me throughout and made me wonder if Stein purposely ignored that fact to work within context of the story. And then the ending. First off, I mentioned in the first one that the climax was insane. This one isn't quite as crazy, but it does have its moments. You know that hamster on the cover? Well, things get pretty crazy with it. However, the ending is the purest definition of a cop-out. Seriously, this will go down in my books as one of the greatest plot conveniences ever. There are some decent moments in the book, but it doesn't hold up too well with the first one. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion? Till next time, have a scary day.